It was late summer when Rachel decided to make the long drive from her home in North Carolina to her friend Amy's cabin, in the remote mountains of Tennessee. She had been looking forward to the trip for weeks, excited to spend a weekend away from the stresses of her job, deep in the woods, surrounded by nature. The plan was simple, just her, Amy, and a few other friends relaxing by the lake, hiking during the day, and sitting around the fire at night. Rachel packed her bags, loaded up her car, and set off in the late afternoon. The drive was supposed to take about four hours, but she didn't mind, the countryside was beautiful this time of year. The sun was setting as she made her way deeper into the mountains, the orange and pink hues of the sky fading to dark blue as the road twisted and turned through thick forests. As night fell, the roads became narrower and more isolated. The further Rachel drove, the fewer cars she saw. Her GPS signal flickered in and out, but she wasn't too worried, Amy had given her directions ahead of time. She'd driven on rural roads before, and though the winding mountain passes could be tricky, she was confident she could handle it. About two hours into the drive, the road became rougher, the asphalt giving way to gravel and dirt. Trees loomed on either side, their branches swaying in the wind. Rachel glanced at her phone, no signal. She wasn't too far from Amy's cabin now, maybe thirty minutes more. She rolled down the window to let in the cool mountain air, enjoying the peace and quiet. But then, up ahead, she saw something that made her slow the car down. In the middle of the road was a figure, a man, standing still, illuminated by her headlights. He was facing her, his hands at his sides, and he didn't move as her car approached. There was no other vehicle in sight, no house nearby, just the dark, empty road and this man standing there. Rachel's heart began to race. She slowed to a crawl, keeping a cautious distance. The man didn't wave for help or make any motion to indicate he was in distress. He just stood there, staring at her car. Is he hurt? Rachel muttered to herself, though something about the way he stood so still made her uneasy. Unsure of what to do, she stopped the car a few yards away from him and rolled the window down just a crack. Hey! She called out, her voice shaky. Are you okay? The man didn't respond. He didn't move at all. Rachel's unease turned to fear. This wasn't normal. She checked her phone again, still no signal. Her mind raced. She had heard stories about carjackers pretending to be stranded or injured on rural roads, waiting for someone to stop and then robbing them. Was that what this was? Her instinct screamed at her to drive, to get away from this man, but her hand hovered over the gear shift, hesitant. What if he really was in trouble? What if he needed help? But before she could make a decision, the man took a step forward. After driving for several minutes, Rachel slowed down, her pulse still racing. She needed to get her bearings, find her way back to the main road, or at least somewhere with cell service. But as she looked around, the trees and the winding dirt road all looked the same, and there were no signs to guide her. Rachel glanced at her phone again, still no signal. Come on, come on, she muttered, tapping the screen in frustration. Nothing. She pulled over for a moment, trying to gather her thoughts. She was lost. She had no GPS, no idea where she was, and somewhere out there, in the dark, that man was still walking. Just as she was about to pull back onto the road, her phone buzzed in her hand. For a moment, relief flooded through her, a signal. She quickly opened her maps app, but before it could load, the screen froze, and the signal dropped again. Frustration welled up inside her, but before she could react, something caught her eye. Through the trees, just off the side of the road, she saw a faint light. It was flickering, maybe the headlights of another car, or a house in the distance. 
Desperate for help, Rachel made a quick decision. She turned the car off the main path and onto a narrow trail leading toward the light. The trail was rough, the tires bouncing over rocks and roots, but she pressed on, hoping the light would lead her to someone who could help. As she drove, the light grew brighter, and soon she could make out the shape of a small cabin nestled in the woods. It looked old, the windows dark, but the light outside, a single lantern hanging by the door, was still flickering. Rachel parked the car and hesitated for a moment, her hand on the door handle. Something about the cabin felt off, but she was out of options. She needed directions. She needed help. She stepped out of the car, her shoes crunching on the gravel as she approached the cabin. The woods were eerily silent, no animals, no wind, just the soft flicker of the lantern casting dancing shadows on the walls. She knocked on the door. Nothing. She knocked again, louder this time. Hello. Is anyone home? Still nothing. Rachel turned to leave, but just as she took a step back, the door creaked open on its own. She froze, her breath catching in her throat. The inside of the cabin was dark, the shadows deep and unsettling. Hello. She called out again, her voice trembling. No response? She took a hesitant step forward, peering into the darkness. The cabin smelled musty, like it hadn't been lived in for years. Dust covered the furniture, and the air was thick and stale. But then she noticed something, a faint sound, coming from the back of the cabin. It was soft, almost rhythmic, like the creaking of wood. Her heart pounded in her chest as she strained to listen. And then she saw him. At the far end of the cabin, sitting in a wooden rocking chair, was the man from the road. Rachel's breath caught in her throat, her body freezing in place. He was sitting perfectly still, his back to her, the chair rocking slowly back and forth. The sound, the gentle creak of wood, echoed through the room, sending chills down her spine. How had he gotten here so fast? Had he followed her? Was he waiting for her? Her mind raced with questions, but there was no time to think. Every instinct screamed at her to leave, to run. Slowly, she took a step back, trying to make her way out of the cabin without drawing attention. But as soon as she moved, the rocking stopped. The man's head turned slightly, just enough for her to see the corner of his face, still shadowed but unmistakable. He was smiling. Leaving so soon? His voice was low, almost a whisper, but it cut through the silence like a knife. Rachel's blood ran cold. She took another step back, her heart hammering in her chest. The man stood up, his movements slow and deliberate, his eyes never leaving her. You came all this way, he said, his smile widening. You shouldn't leave now? Without another word, Rachel turned and ran. Rachel sprinted back to her car, her feet pounding against the ground as the sound of the man's footsteps followed her, steady and deliberate. She could hear him behind her, but she didn't dare look back. Her heart raced, her breath coming in short, panicked bursts as she fumbled for her keys. She threw herself into the car, slamming the door behind her and locking it in one swift motion. Her hands trembled as she shoved the key into the ignition, her entire body shaking with adrenaline. The car roared to life, and without hesitation, she floored the gas pedal, the tires kicking up gravel as she sped down the narrow trail, away from the cabin. In the rearview mirror, she could see the man standing in the middle of the road, his figure barely visible in the glow of her taillights. He didn't chase her. He didn't need to. Rachel kept driving, her hands gripping the wheel tightly, her mind racing. She didn't stop until she reached the main road, her headlights finally catching a glimpse of another car in the distance. Relief flooded her, but she couldn't shake the feeling that she hadn't truly escaped. 
By the time she reached Amy's cabin, she was shaking, her face pale, her breath still ragged. She burst through the door, her friends gathering around her, concern etched on their faces. What happened? Amy asked, her voice filled with worry. Rachel tried to explain, but the words wouldn't come. All she could think about was the man, the way he had watched her, the way he had followed her without ever really moving. For the rest of the weekend, Rachel couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. Every sound, every shadow, every flicker of light made her jump. She tried to push the experience out of her mind, to convince herself it was just her imagination, but deep down, she knew something was wrong. When she returned home a few days later, she checked the local news, curious to see if anyone had reported anything strange near the cabin. There were no stories, no reports of a man on the road, no missing persons. It was as if nothing had ever happened. But Rachel knew the truth. She never went back to the mountains. She never drove on isolated roads alone at night again. And even though the man from the road had never spoken to her again, she could still feel his eyes on her, watching from the shadows, waiting for the moment when she would finally let her guard down. Because he hadn't forgotten. And neither had she.